What's up guys? As you may have heard, the full game list to the Sega Genesis Mini has been released, and it's 42 games, so we get even more than we originally expected. So I want to go ahead and go over every single game that's in this thing, and I want to let you know what I think about it. Was it a good addition? Was it not? We have 42 games we're going to see, so let's go ahead and get it rolling. So everybody and their grandmother knew we were going to get the first Sonic game. It's one of the most recognizable properties on the system. I mean, come on, man. You knew it was going to be there. Echo the Dolphin would make the cut, and I think this was actually a good addition. This game is difficult. It's quite different from other 16-bit games of the era, just in the way it plays, the way it's laid out. The built-in save state of the Sega Genesis Mini will probably make this game a lot easier on everybody who's going to try to defeat it. Um, I don't think this was a bad addition. I mean, like I said, this is a unique game in terms of gameplay for that era. So, I can't say I'm unhappy with it. Castlevania Bloodlines also made the cut, and I can't tell you how excited I am for this because this is a game that has not received much love over the years. I mean, it did see a Wii Virtual Console release, but outside of that, this game has been mostly untouched by Konami. And to have it uh, added here is beautiful. I mean, I can't really complain about anything about this edition. This is one of the best games on the system in my opinion. It's my favorite game on the system. And quite frankly, it's addition here should be celebrated by everyone. Altered Beast is kind of a mixed bag for me. Um, from a nostalgia standpoint, I am really happy that it's here. It's Altered Beast, man. You know, it's a staple of early Sega Genesis ownership, but... At the same time, man, Altered Beast is a very short, very shallow game. Uh, how many times are you going to play it on this particular device is a concern because most of us may start it up, may beat it once, and you probably won't touch it again. So there's also that part of me that thinks this may have been a wasted slot. Either way, guys, Altered Beast is classic. It's hit or miss depending on how you feel about it, but it's here if you want to play it. Come to your doom. Gunstar Heroes is also on this thing, and I think this is a real important addition. Uh, this is Sega's kind of contra at the time, you know? This was really, really, really important to the Sega Genesis experience back then, because when this came out, this was one of those unique experiences that made owning a Sega Genesis so cool. And the fact that it's here, man, I think it's great. Much like the first Sonic game, we also are getting Sonic 2. And again, everybody knew we were going to get this. This is a staple of these kinds of releases. Sonic 2 is also an incredibly fun game. So, you know, an, again, you knew it was going to be here. It's instantly recognizable by every Sega Genesis fan. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. You know, a lot of people are going to want to play this. A lot of people love this. This is going to help sell the system. Contra Hardcore is here, and much like Castlevania Bloodlines, this is a game that has not received a ton of love over the years. You know, uh, Konami just did not really put out a lot of effort in getting these particular Sega Genesis versions of these games out, and the very fact that this is here, one of the most technically impressive games on the system, is absolutely fantastic. 
Contra Hardcore isn't just a hard game, it's a fun game, it's a very rewarding game, it allows you to play two players, it just not enough can be said for how awesome this game is and how great it is that it's part of this collection. Golden Axe is also here. Golden Axe is one of my favorite games on the system. And that's because it's also one of the handful of first games I got on the system. It wasn't a launch game for the system, but it came out not too long after the system was released in North America. Uh, me and my friends and my sisters just played the absolute hell out of this. You know, it's, uh, I mean, it's as classic as arcade conversions get. The Sega Genesis version was spot on. It even had a little extra, you know, gameplay in it. Uh, it had uh, an extra level in it that was really cool, an extra boss. Um, you know, Golden Axe, dude, you can't go wrong with it. Shinobi 3 is probably one of the best games on the system. It is, from a technical standpoint, a beautiful game. It has a great soundtrack. It's got some of the best gameplay you could possibly ever want in a platformer of this type. I mean, what can you say about Shinobi 3, man? It had to be here. It is one of the best games on the system. Earthworm Jim is another game that was third party and it's an important part of the Sega Genesis experience because it's one of those games that came out and it compared favorably to more powerful systems or what was perceived as more powerful systems like the Super Nintendo version. I mean you put these two games side by side and both of them look and sound really good. And Earthworm Jim was really one of those games where the developer really put effort into the Genesis version to make sure that there was some form of parity there. And you had to appreciate that. Not to mention the fact it's a difficult game and it's very well made. Moving on to Space Harrier 2, this guys is really the first stinker of the bunch. If you watch my channel for any length of time, you know I am not a fan of Space Harrier 2 on the Genesis. I do not think it runs well, I do not think it plays well, doesn't look good, it's just not Space Harrier to me. I just do not like the way this game feels. And I know that there's a lot of you guys out there that like this game, and I do appreciate that. You know, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong for liking it, but just for me personally, this is a game I could have done without on the system. I really do think they should have put another Super Scaler on it, uh, Super Hang On, Outrun, any number of other Super Scalers would have been a better choice than this one. Shining Force was a must addition or a must have addition to this system. Uh, very, very classic strategy RPG, plays great, I think it looks great for the uh, game at, that was released at the time. I really enjoyed this one, guys. I think Shining Force is a really important uh, uh, historical piece for the Genesis. It showed that the Genesis could do these games well and that these games existed in its library. And, you know, the Super Nintendo wasn't the only place to get a good role-playing game of any kind. And Shining Force definitely makes a positive addition to the Sega Genesis Mini Library. <laughs> Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. <laughs> Ugh, this is one of those games where... I can't say it surprises me that it's here, but I'm not particularly happy that it is. This is another potential wasted slot, depending on how you look at it. I know that there are a ton of Puyo Puyo fans out there, a number of fans of this type of game. I'm not particularly one of them. I don't think this game is terrible though. I can't just turn my nose up to it completely. I could have done without it, but it is what it is guys, and it's here if you want to play it.
Tojam and Earl is here, and this is another important one from the Genesis, you know, kind of early era there, because Tojam and Earl, when I first played this game, I hated it. I really did, because I didn't understand what I was supposed to do. I didn't understand the nature of the gameplay. I didn't understand the exploratory elements to it. I didn't understand the, you know, find it, you know, collect it, move on, move down, move around. You know, there's a lot of exploration here that makes this game what it is. And at the time, I didn't really understand it. It would actually take me a few years before I understood how to play this. And once I did, I really realized how good of a game it was. You know, this is a good game. And again, with the save state feature of the system, this is another one that should be accessible to a lot of people that couldn't beat the original. Whoa. And on that note, we move on to Comic Zone. <laughs> Comic Zone is one of the hardest games on the system in my opinion. It is a game that has kicked my ass for a very, very long time. And again, save states should make it accessible to people that had no chance of ever beating the original cart version. Comic Zone is of course a beat-em-up that is set in a comic book style where you're sort of moving frame to frame and discovering little hidden things. And there's a lot of gameplay here despite the game's really short playtime from beginning to end. Uh, comic Zone is a good game though, guys. The gameplay is definitely solid. The design is solid, the visual presentation is phenomenal for the time. So Comic Zone is a great addition, and like I said, you'll actually may be able to beat this thing with the save state feature. The addition of Castle of Illusion with Mickey Mouse is a win beyond uh, some anything I ever thought possible because I had no idea that we were had any chance of getting this on the Sega Genesis Mini. Castle of Illusion is one of my favorite games on the Genesis for a number of reasons. It was the time that it was released man it's an early Genesis game. A lot of people don't realize just how early this game was released in the system's life and for it to look and sound and play the way it did it captivated millions of us back then, man, and we just absolutely fell in love with this game. And the fact that it's here, man, I can't tell you how happy I am. World of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck is also here. And this is another a addition. While this game doesn't look quite as good as Castle of Illusion in my opinion, I love the gameplay of it, I love the variety of it, I love the fact that you can play as two players. There's a lot of you know content here that is really really good and I love that about this game. I'm really happy it made the cut. Thunder Force 3 shows up as a shoot 'em up for us, and I'm really mixed on this one, guys, because while Thunder Force 3 is one of the best shooters of its era, it sort of misses the mark because Thunder Force 4 isn't here. And I prefer Thunder Force 4. I think Thunder Force 4 looks and sounds better, but like I said, it's, it's really mixed because Thunder Force 3 is such a great game. You know, Thunder Force 3 still looks and sounds good itself. It's just that there was one in the series that was a little bit better to me, and I wish that was here as well, or in place of it. But on its own merits, Thunder Force 3 is a hell of a shoot 'em up, and I am happy that it is here. Super Fantasy Zone is here guys and this is another one that I'm really happy about. I am a Fantasy Zone fan and the fact that this is here having never been released in North America before is a big win. This is a great version of the game. It looks fantastic. It sounds fantastic. It's one of the better Fantasy Zone games out there and I'm really happy that it's here.
Streets of Rage 2 is here, and honestly, I expected all three of them to be here. I can kind of see where Sega's coming from, where they didn't want to put three of the same game series on it, but you know, all three of these games were classic. But I can understand why Streets of Rage 2 is here as the lone edition, because it's a lot of people's favorite, and it's a lot of people's favorite by miles. It's one of the most recognizable games for the system, it's one of the most played games for the system, and I am not surprised in the least that it's here. Landstalker is one of those games that a lot of people don't appreciate at first. It's a game that's a little funky when you first start playing it. You have to sort of acclimate yourself to the type of gameplay that it has. But once you start get, you know, digging into its content, you really understand this world is pretty good, man, and these characters are awesome. It's the kind of game that once you put in a little bit of time, you get back so much more. Now, whether or not you're going to be one of those people that want to put time into it is something else entirely. I do understand that. But for those of you looking for an adventure-type game that plays really well and looks pretty good, Landstalker is not a bad choice. Mega Man The Wily Wars. Man, boy, was this one a shocker to me. I thought this one had no chance whatsoever of ever coming out on any kind of compilation. But it's here, and it's all three of the NES Mega Man games sort of spruced up a bit with improved graphics and improved sound. Well, depending on how you look at that improved sound. Mega Man The Wily Wars is sort of one of those games that it's unknown to a lot of Sega Genesis people because it never came out in the US in any kind of physical capacity. It was released in other territories um, in cartridge form and some people know it and love it, other people have no clue even what the hell it is or what it entails. So the addition here is really great because it opens up the Sega Genesis Mini to a whole consumer base that has never played this game. Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, uh, Special Champion Edition actually, I knew this game was going to be here, I put it in my last Sega Genesis Mini uh, episode, and a lot of people said there was no way it was going to get it because it only had three button controllers. Well, I had a feeling that Sega had a plan to release those six button controllers separately, so I just knew Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition had to be here. I mean, a release like this without a big tentpole fighting game, it was unimaginable. You know, I knew this game had to be here, guys, and it is, and that's pretty good. We probably would have appreciated a Super Street Fighter 2 uh, edition as well, or instead of, but Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition is a fine game on its own. I really can't complain. Ghouls and Ghosts is next up, and this is a game that I was really hoping we'd get. I didn't think we'd get it, but it's here. Uh, a very important early release in the life of the Sega Genesis. It's one of the first games that really blew people away visually and from a sound standpoint. It made people respect the machine. It made people step back and go, wow, this thing really is capable of arcade-like graphics. And... You know, it's so important that Sega scored this and, you know, and developed the version of it themselves because without this game, I don't think the Sega Genesis would have had the impact on North America in those early days that it actually ended up having. Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. Ugh. Guys, this is another one that I am not a fan of. I've never appreciated the Alex Kidd games. I am especially not a fan of this one. I can't stand the way this thing plays or sounds. This is the second stinker in the lineup that I feel another game would have benefited us all if we had had access to it. 
Uh, but I know, again, it has its fans. I know some of you like this game, so, you know, it is what it is. Our next game is Beyond Oasis, and Beyond Oasis is a fantastic adventure game, guys. This is the type of game that when you sit down and start playing it, it hooks you. It's so easy to get into. It's so easy to pick up and play. I just, I can't recommend this game enough. If you are a fan of Zelda, you know, any of the Zeldas really, you should be able to jump right into this game and understand what it wants you to do and how you have to play it. It really is one of the best adventure games on the system. And on that note, another best game on the system is Phantasy Star 4 The End of a Millennium. This is one of the best RPGs on the system, guys. I'm, you know, kind of broken record there here in a few of these, but it really, really is. Phantasy Star 4 is one of the best experiences on this machine, bar none. It's a deep role-playing game with tons of hours of gameplay, tons of stuff to do, tons of stuff to find. You cannot go wrong with this game. If you are a fan of role-playing games from the era and you have not played through and beaten Phantasy Star 4, this is your opportunity. This I highly recommend. You, you, you just have to do it, man. It's that damn good. Moving on to another stinker is Sonic Spinball. <sighs> this is another one I know has its fans, and I appreciate that. Not going to disrespect you about it, but I'm not a fan. I do not like Sonic Spinball. I hate the soundtrack to this game. I hate the sound effects of this game. I hate the visual presentation of this game. This is a piss poor game. It sucks balls. It shouldn't be here. And that's really all I'm going to say on it. Vector Man is here, and of course we knew Vector Man was going to be here. It's a staple of the later Genesis library. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Part 2 is in here instead, but Vector Man is Vector Man, and Vector Man plays pretty decent for this type of game or what it wanted you to be. It's a run-and-gun platformer. It has a very distinctive visual style. Some of it has very, very impressive animation and some very, very spe uh, impressive special effects. So I'm not surprised to see it here. I think I called it in my last video about the Sega Genesis Mini. So, you know, no big surprise. <laughs> Wonder Boy in Monster World is here, and this game has a lot of gameplay. You know, a lot of people don't really, you know, understand the uh, attraction to the Wonder Boy games, and, you know, it really is all about that type of gameplay or that type of experience. And the cool thing about the Wonder Boy games is, is that there's a lot of variety in these games, you know, from from entry to entry they would change up and you know you would sort of get different experiences each and every time and this one here has a lot of gameplay to it so I can't really beat on you know beat down its addition too much moving on is a big surprise addition to the list and that is Mega Drive Tetris now many of you may not know, but Sega had the arcade rights to Tetris in Japan, which meant that Sega made versions of Tetris in Japan, and Sega wanted to bring those home, but Nintendo had the home rights to it, so this game is actually rare as hell. You know, it was never distributed widely, it was never mass produced, so what's out there? It's sort of one of those games that if you have it complete, not complete whatever it it you know winds up being expensive as all get out 
I don't really have any ties to this guys because I've never owned it so it doesn't have any special place to me I can't really say I'm excited about it either way but it is kind of cool that they added it considering that it's so rare and so expensive The next surprise was Darius, or Darius, and this is an arcade game that was never released on the Genesis, and it's a kind of a big surprise that they would, you know, go out and make a whole brand new port or finish up work that had been started like this. You know, this kind of is cool, man, because this is a new release for the system, and in my opinion, I'm really curious about how this turned out and how it's going to look and sound, you know, all these years later. You know, what is this? What is this port? How did it turn out? You know, what's the quality of it? How does it compare to other ports of this game? You know, curiosity definitely has me on this one, so I'm glad it's here. The Sega Genesis and Electronic Arts go hand in hand. I mean, I really don't care if you dislike EA. Its games were an important part of the Sega Genesis experience in North America. And the fact that Road Rash 2 is here is a really big positive in my opinion. They could have put any of the Road Rash games on here and I would have been happy. But I'm especially happy that it's Part 2 instead of Part 3. But I would have rather have had Part 1. Either way, Road Rash is here. Road Rash is a great playing game. It's a very difficult, very lengthy challenge of a game. You know, I really can't say any more. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know how much I love it. Alicia Dragoon was kind of a surprise entry into this because I didn't really see Sega digging into this, you know, digging into the library this far to get this game because while people do like Alicia Dragoon and it does have a fan base, it's not widely known to the mainstream Sega Genesis audience. And the fact that they reached back and brought it forward as one of the games in this particular, you know, collection is really cool. I'm really happy Sega did it. Now, Monster World 4 is a beast inclusion. I am so friggin' happy this is here. This is one of the best looking, sounding, and playing games on the system. And frankly, its addition is both a surprise and a joy to see. Uh, you know, you can't really get more colorful or joyful than this particular game on the Sega Genesis. And the fact that it was never released in North America is a big, big plus here. Because again, this is one of those games that is now opened up to an entire generation of people that never got a chance to play it. Eternal Champions is here, and I'm not really surprised that Eternal Champions is here because it was made by Sega. It was one of those games that was really highly advertised and really closely associated with the brand back in the mid-90s. And, you know, there's fans of this game and there are haters of this game. I'm sort of stuck in between. I understand some of the appeal to this game because it's so different from other fighting games of the time, but I understand the flip side of that coin where this game is difficult to play, it's hard to get into sometimes. The gameplay is difficult to come to terms with. This is not a Street Fighter clone in any way, shape, or form, so some of you are going to be really happy about this and others not so much. We're also going to get the first Columns game, and this is a game that sort of falls into that Altered Beast, you know, nostalgia sort of makes me happy that it's here, but the reality of gameplay makes me realize that I'm probably not going to touch this more than once or twice. 
you know, I mean, I like Flash Columns. I can sit and play that for quite a bit, but I just have better versions of this game. And I do, I'm not going to sit down and play this with all these other great games available. So this slot probably should have went to something else. Dynamite Hetty is here, and this is a very weird looking platformer, very unique art style. You know, the whole way that this plays is really weird. This is a unique game on the system, and I'm really happy that it's here. You know, it's one of those games that is, it's just so unique to the platform, you had to love it. Um, it's also one of those games that... A lot of people I don't think have really played in depth. A lot of people haven't experienced this because it was a later game in the system's life. And a lot of people had moved on before having a chance to play this game. And now you will have a chance to play it. It really is pretty damn good. The inclusion of Kid Chameleon is pretty good. It's one of the few Western-made Genesis games that I enjoyed. Uh, I also think that it is a game that's going to benefit heavily from the save state system that's going to be in the Sega Genesis Mini. This game is long and it is difficult. And the fact that it didn't have a save system back in the day in the original cartridge meant that not very many people beat it and that may change now. Without a doubt, the worst game in this compilation is Virtua Fighter 2. It is a game that it took balls for Sega to think that they could translate it over to the Genesis back in the day, but it's not a game that turned out particularly well. It doesn't look good, doesn't play good, and it definitely doesn't sound good. And there are a number of games in the Genesis library that would have fit better in this compilation than Virtual Fighter 2. I mean, geez, man, I, I would have had I would have rather have had just about anything than this. I'm really stoked that they decided to bring out Strider for the Sega Genesis Mini. This was a very, very important game in the history of the machine for me. Uh, first 8 meg cartridge if I'm not mistaken. It's also one of the very first games I imported from Japan with my own money. And it was a landmark title, man, because it was one of those games that looked so much like the arcade that when you played it, you just couldn't help but to sit there just in awe. You know, it was like, holy heck, man, look how close that is to the arcade. And it really was at the time. I mean, you know, we were used to playing the Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Master System at that point. And by the time 1990 had rolled around, you know, the arcade had started pulling so far away from the 8-bit consoles that the home machines just, the games just look nothing like what was coming out in the arcade. And the Sega Genesis really started changing all of that. And Strider was just one of those games that was just awe inspiring, man. You just sat there, like I said, and were, and was just blown away the very first time you saw it. It really was a religious experience and I'm really happy that Sega has it here. Alright guys, our last game is Light Crusader, and this is a role-playing game that was developed by Treasure of all people. And it's so unique, and I think a lot of people have not played this game, and I think that's primarily because of its later release. It wasn't released until 1995, I think, and a lot of people were in the stages of moving on to next generation mach uh, machines, or they were saving up for next generation machines and this game got bypassed by a lot of people and that really is a shame because it's a good solid title. 
It's, you know, very different from the stuff you were normally seeing from Treasure. You know, everything about it was different from the stuff you normally saw from Treasure. The art style was different. Uh, the genre was different. Just so much about it was different. And I definitely think its inclusion here again opens it up to a world of people that have never played it. Never even heard of it, I bet some of you haven't. So, Light Crusader is a fantastic addition to this library. Alright guys, so there you have it, all 42 games for the Sega Genesis Mini. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, it should have had this game, it should have had that game, there's an omission here, and you know that's going to happen no matter what. Sometimes these games are hard to get, sometimes they're expensive to get, sometimes they're stuck in legal hell and people are fighting over them so they're unavailable. Whatever the reason is that your game didn't make it, try not to concentrate too much on that because the game list here is as solid as we could have hoped for. I really do think they got most of it right, and outside of a couple of stinkers, this is a very solid lineup of games. Now there is also an Asian and Japanese version of this game, of the, or this system that's going to be coming out, and it has a slightly different list of games, so you might want to look into that. Go to some place like Play Asia and check it out there. I think you can pre-order the systems there and see if it has the games you think are missing. I know that one of those or both of those actually have Musha on them, something that a lot of people really wanted in the US version. But either way guys, I really do think the Sega Genesis Mini is shaping up to something that's really worth buying. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.